This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Thank you for watching. And of course, we're ready to discuss the biggest sentiment stories and have lifestyle conversations. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I have my co-anchors with me, Ife Omai and Ife Oluo Sheke. What up? It's good. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How are you? Am I? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Thanks for asking. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, moving on. People are shooting in this corona times. Some sets are testing cast and crew. Um, so a big kudos to them. That stuff is expensive, but some companies are not testing for corona, which is a major risk. Don't play with your lives, my people. And this is coming from filmmaker Mildred Okwo. Oh, is it Okwo or Okwo? But you know, whenever we have an actor on this table, if you, my, you have accused me of overly asking that question and squeezing them and asking, okay, what are the measures you put in place? Mm. And none of them have said you have to get a test done. Mm. None. It's all like, oh yeah, some wear face masks, mm. um, the crew or something. I've never heard anybody said, say that and I've tried to be nice not to over push, but thank God somebody like Mildred is bringing that conversation yeah. of COVID-19. <clears throat> some people contract it and it's like cold and kata and malaria for, for them, but some people contract it and it gives them a disease, another kind of illness that they yeah. will battle for life. I saw someone yeah. yesterday talking about how a friend of hers had to remove her womb because of COVID-19. What? And this is, the good thing is, of course, she's finished having her children. So hey. that was like thankful. So COVID-19 is not a joke. Yo, Personally, when kiss. I saw it, I was just like, you know those, those things where, like, where your parents are correcting, you know what they're saying is true, but you just don't want to hear it. Mm. I feel like for a long time now, I've been, I mean, I've still been careful, I'm not going to lie. I still put my hands and thighs. I still use scope to just don't touch me, shall I don't speak closer. But I've been a lot more lackadaisical about being, um, par not, I don't want to say paranoid, but really being conscious about it mentally because it is really draining. But um, I think for me, when I read this thing, it was just like that talk that I needed to hear. Not even, I know she was addressing filmmakers, but for me, it was also thinking, Actually, you have to be serious, even be more serious now that they've lifted all these mm -hmm. bands and I don't know what they're doing that. It's kind of like, okay, I can't use that word on TV. It's kind of like a mind play, let me say, when you're supposed to be taking this thing seriously, but the government, the people who are supposed to be in charge of you <coughs> are giving <coughs> us a vibe that we are doing better by saying, yeah, you can now go to malls. Yeah, you can now go to um, pubs and restaurants and things like that. It's hard to have that wave happening in town and then still carry that seriousness like it was like when when you know we were still working when there was a lockdown but when the roads were empty and people were crying in their houses that they can't work it was kind of serious for me that okay i have a responsibility to be careful because the tone was serious but now that tone is not serious it's kind of hard to still do all that but obviously yeah i agree to everything that she said I totally agree with um, Mildred on this one because um, it's really important that we still keep the safety measures. We know that if we do not um, get our lives back, right, it's going to affect a lot of things. It's going to, a lot of things. It's going to affect the economy. It's going to affect um, employment. It's going to affect a just several things. It's probably going to affect relationships as well Definitely. and stuff. So uh, we know those things are important, which is why the government has to bring back some things with precautionary measures right but are these people keeping to it now you're about you're allowed to get back on set but are you wearing your face mask are you coming with your test results are you having close contact because i know this person so well i'm hugging this person i know we may all be guilty of you know loosening up right now because that's what it is because life must go on right mm -hmm. i saw a festival in wuhan that they were packed maskless i don't yeah. want to hear that name from <laughs> Massless Aww. festival goers, you know, all packed in one place. And then, you know, like everybody just needs to sit back, at least before you go to bed every night and just think about it. It's still there. Mm. Look out your window and be like, yeah, that's, I see you, COVID. And then if you can do that every night, you always remember that it's COVID. Mm. Mm. Don't relax your, on your multivitamins anyway. Everything mm. you've been doing to boost your immune system, this is not the time to relax on that. Even if you're beginning to relax in terms of shaking and hugging, and, um, which I'm not encouraging, but I'm just saying in case you that end up getting your, it. That has always been your thought now. Uh, that if you, I'm still going to need to add... Is, Vitamin C, zinc, everything. Ready to fight. Yeah, <laughs> you know. I mean, I, I have to walk. I, I don't have the luxury of saying yeah. I have to go stay home, right? Yeah. So if, if that's the only thing I know I can do for myself to ensure that if perhaps mm. it happens, then 
hopefully with God on my side and doing the right thing, you know. Mm. Yeah. But anyway, moving on to the next story. Brandy credits therapy, meditation, journaling, her faith and thoughts of her daughter for ultimately improving her mental health and for saving her from depression. I think um, this brought me back to when we're talking about therapy in this part of the world and, oh, okay. and um, we actually do not really see it as a big deal, but it works for a lot of people. Sometimes all you have to do about certain issues, they say a problem shared is a problem solved, mm -hmm. right? Half solved. So um, if you share your problems with somebody, especially somebody that is experienced, somebody who is not judgmental, somebody who's probably had different experiences, and you share with them, from all their experience, their gathered experience together, they probably would have something positive to tell you that will probably cheer you up or make you feel better about your situation. Sorry, so before you go on, sorry to cut in there, when it comes to therapies, it's not necessarily about experience they're actually trained to listen and understand and look at it from different perspectives so uh, a therapist doesn't have to be like an older person you see yeah that, that, that was so, you know I when meant, you know so. when you added experience into yeah, it, that's, yeah that wasn't what i meant was as a therapist right mm -hmm. you've met different you've seen different cases mm -hmm. those experiences will lead to something you get me to there will be an idea to discuss another thing mm -hmm. that's what i mean so um i think um oh you made me lose my train of thought but about that. um Finally, I like meditation as well because mm. you need to know where the root cause of the problem is from. Is it from you? Is it from somewhere else? You need to meditate. Think about it. Think about how to go, how, how to go about it. That works a lot. And of course, your faith, whatever you believe in, is it mm. God? Is it is it is it um, your Buddhism? Is whatever it is? What is it? Just your conviction within yourself that is your faith. Whatever it is, it definitely works. And I like the three things she underlined, and I think they're amazing. And I think, man, no matter what you're going through out there, it's there has to be too something hard. you hold There's on something. to. Just mm -hmm. to go for what you've said, um, it, it is, I think for me, I, I, I would hope that, even from, I'm preaching to myself as well, that people even start to do all these things. Because when I thought about all the stuff that she was talking about, people have actually encouraged uh, um, people to do that naturally, away from mm -hmm. even being that um, on the bottom, like journaling and stuff. When I was younger, I used to journal a lot. Um, boarding school, I write a lot. And I, I think every time I've done that, I will stop for a while because I'm getting older. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the new phase that I'm in until something bad happens and I go back to read it. And it's really helped sometimes because I laugh at my problems back then. So I always used to tell myself, if you can laugh at your problems back then, maybe you will one day laugh at this one. So sometimes journaling is really good, meditating. Mm -hmm. And also to touch on spirituality, I think that's also something that has been proven that people who have a... I don't want to. Say, I don't want to call it religion, but who have a belief system that mm. seems to be bigger than them have have been able to manage a lot better than some others. And the belief system doesn't have to be supernatural, or like mm -hmm. you know, in the Bible or a book or whatever. But it's always good to have that spirituality. But that was just to touch on what you were saying that I, I agreed on. For me, Brandy has been somebody that I watched growing up. She was one of those images that we needed desperately. Um, she was the first Black Cinderella to air. And all that stuff. So she's done a lot for the culture, but for someone who's so talented in terms of acting and singing, she did um, go silent for a very long time. So for this for me was kind of like, it helped me to fill in the gaps of why that could have happened and mm. things like that. I'm really happy that she has um, come through that. And with the new album that she has now kind of broken her silence with, I'm hoping that we will see more of her in terms of like the creative work that she does. Because I feel like she's really, like she's really, talented so yeah, i'm hoping to see how on like screens you know back into the studio more music and everything i, yeah. I honestly wish her the best i like i like her openness about it and that she's talking about it like you said it helps people remember and understand as well when i was reading her story it just reminded me of um a decent hollywood actress that we've had on tea time as well that we spoke to that had to also go through um an accident whereby someone lost um his life and mm. all that i can't remember her name now. i don't know why it's not coming but i can definitely see her face you know somebody lost uh, she had an accident in a car accident, in a car accident mm. and, and Brandy also um, had um, the same. It's been above Yes, thank you very much. So it, it made me 
um, put them side by side and also yeah. how um, she was also able to like come through it. She talked about depression as well. Mm. It's not an easy thing. And also having to fit in that perfect um, perfection that it seemed like this is brandy. She has to be this. She has mm. to be that. So those were two things um, they had to battle at the same time. I like that she's talking about it. Okay. And it just goes to show that there has to be something you hold on to. Whether it's God, whether it's... There has to be or just something that mm. makes you um, believe that life is worth living. Yeah. And when you find that one thing, it's usually very special and yeah. good amazing stuff okay um tea time we'll be right back after the short break but when we come back um you'll be having if you washington talking to the ex big brother niger housemate keisha we'll be right back